Okay, today I want to talk about risk versus reward. But first, I'm going to start out with a story about the run that I just did here on Mount Cyprus. Pretty cool, eh? It's June, and there's still a ton of snow up here. You can even hear the grouse going in the background. So one of the runs slash hikes I like to do is up a mountain, then through the subalpine forest, and out to this really beautiful viewpoint over the ocean. So it gives me time in the bush, and it also gives me a great cardio workout, because you're walking or running, you're walking the uphills and you're running the flats. It's a good workout. So today as I was heading up, at a certain point, I wasn't quite at the end, I was like, screw this, I'm turning around, the numbers just don't add up. So what didn't add up? So it was a couple of things. For one, it's getting late in the day, so it's going to be dark fairly soon. For two, the fog was coming in. For three, a rain was falling. For four, there was snow. And then there were things like I didn't have a hiking partner with me. The ground was really wet, um, slippery. My phone was running low on charge. So it's a question of risk versus reward. The risk was getting pretty high, and the reward, well, there's always a reward, but it wasn't high enough to justify that level of risk. All right, now it's getting cold. So I've got a fleece on. Don't worry about the car. Don't go call it off for short. It's just the best way yet. Okay, that was a dramatic time for the phone to die. Right as I got to the sleety, rainy, snowy, and super cold part of the hike. So back to jiu-jitsu. You want to balance how much risk you take based off of how much reward you're going to get. You know, for a small reward, you take a small risk. Conversely, if there's a very large reward, you might be willing to take a larger risk. If you're fighting in the UFC for the heavyweight title, you know, you might push it a bit harder. So an example of this would be training, you know, just regular sparring. If you're caught in a submission, tap out. There isn't a very large reward to getting out, and there's a large risk. In a different situation, though, it might be worth accepting that different level of risk. To hold on a little bit longer in that triangle choke and try and find your way out. Hopefully you're not accepting that higher level of risk just because you're a stubborn bastard, because then you're going to get injured. But maybe this is a tournament that you've been getting ready for a whole year or something really important. The same thing applies to conditioning, really. There are safer exercises, and there are more dangerous exercises. And in general, you should stick to the safer ones, unless there's a really good reason not to. I'm going to make some enemies here, but an example of a dangerous conditioning exercise is Olympic lifts, the clean and jerk, the snatch, at high reps to failure. So that means that no matter what the people at your CrossFit box tell you, Olympic lifts to failure probably have a pretty high risk to reward ratio. Also important is the fact that there are alternate exercises you can do. Kettlebell swings to failure, much more safe than having this giant heavy bar right over your head. So don't take a big risk every time you train. Remember, for a little reward, take a little risk. For a bigger reward, well, maybe a little bit bigger risk.